funny. Yeah, yeah. Sid, thanks for getting back to me. All right, you got you got two minutes? You got five minutes? Yeah, yeah, listen. Listen, I got a great idea for sitcom. Sitcom, Ani, sitcom, situation comedy. Take the straw to your nose for five minutes and listen to me. Ani, 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 concentrate, all right? Will you just listen to me? Now follow this, all right? Scenario, New York City, okay? Apartment building in New York. Black guy lives in a pocket, okay? Nice black guy, middle class black guy, smokes a pipe, button down sweater type of harmless black guy, okay? We got Benson Cosby living in this apartment here, okay? You got the picture here, harmless black guy, okay? Cross the hall from him, paraplegic kid in a wheelchair, all right? You just get any kid, you stick him in a wheelchair, Ronnie. Ani, don't worry about the unions, Ani. The kid's in a wheelchair here, all right? Kid in a wheelchair, black guy across the hall. These two got a real nice buddy-buddy interracial kind of big brother thing going on here, okay? Real mushy liberal stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. A show with meaning, yeah. A show with relevance to the social problems of today, right. Barry Tyler Moore kind of Norman Lear, yeah, 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 right. You got it, you got it. Liberal bullshit, okay. Ani, 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 listen to him. Listen to me. That isn't the whole thing. Ani. Annie, follow me, all right? You listening? Okay, now, top floor of the building, we got the whorehouse here, all right? Hook is going up and down the stairs all time of night and day, falling over the kid with the wheelchair, sticking lollipops in his mouth, patting him on the head, cute stuff like that, sweet stuff, light stuff, light humor, family humor, something for everybody, all right? Okay, now, ground floor of the building, Gay health club, okay? We got the homos working out with the weights, building up the pectoral muscles. You see what I'm saying here, on? We got everything here. We got the beefcake here doing sit-ups. We got the cheesecake up here doing push-ups. You got me? <laughs> Something for everybody. Wait, 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 wait. Now, listen, Ani, 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 you still there? All right, now listen. One more apartment. Teenage kid lives with his mother, all right? This is kind of the humor of the show. Kid wants to kill everybody in New York City, all right? <laughs> so, like, one week he makes an iron bomb in his bedroom. The next week he puts LSD in the water supply of the city. Then he derails a subway car. Who knows? He starts sniping from his bedroom. Crazy stuff, funny stuff, hilarious stuff. We'll call the show Upstairs, Downstairs. What do you think about that? Huh? Who's PBS? Fuck PBS. Those are little people. They don't count. Well, buy the title off of them. Listen, Arnie, 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 what are you busting my balls on this thing for, huh? Listen, yeah, Arnie, that was two years ago. That was two years. Listen, Arnie, Arnie, I, I don't want to hear about it, all right, Arnie? Arnie, this is a great idea. This is a great project. We should do it. Listen, Arnie, 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 Arnie. I gotta call the other line, I gotta get off. I'll talk to you next week. I'll talk to you next Arnie, 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 I'll talk to you next week. I gotta get off the phone. I'll talk. Ani, Ani, I love you, Ani. I know you love me. Ani, 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 Ani. I'm getting Ani. I'm getting Ani, Ani, Ani. I'm getting off the. I'm getting. I'm. I'm getting off the. Ani, 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 Ani. Goodbye. All right. Now, the first piece of equipment you want to make sure you have on hand is a nice big bucket around. Yay wide, so deep, fill that up with water or any kind of liquid you have on hand. Get your subject by the back of the neck, bring him over the edge of the bucket, just take him by the back of the head, just push him right under the water there, okay? Nice and deep, baptize him, put the fear of God into him, all right? Soak him good, and up, and back down again, okay? 15, 20 seconds is good, right down there, deep in the water. Soak him good, just watch the air bubbles. The air bubbles stop, give it around five more seconds. And up. And back down again, all right? Firm grip on the back of the neck now because they do tend to buck a little bit and watch out for the legs because they do kick as well, all right? Stay out of the way of the legs. You get a nasty kick on the knee, okay? And up. Now you have a subject you're ready to work with. He's wet, he's tired, he's scared. Next piece of equipment you want to make sure you have on hand is a nice big work table, nice big metal work table. I suggest metal just because it lasts longer. Get your subject, put him on top of the table, strap down the legs, strap down the arms, piece of gaffer tape, duct tape over the mouth. You have him where you want him, all right? Just pinch the nostrils. He can't breathe. He's completely under your control. Fingertip control right there on the nostrils. Pinch him. You got him where you want him, all right? Now, how do we want to begin? Well, <clears throat> Myself, I like to start with a kind of simple psychological device, kind of a trademark of mine. I'm a smoker, all right? Bad habit. I know I should quit. I like to drink.
just take the cigarette out of my mouth as I'm beginning the interrogation. Just take that cigarette out, push it right into the navel there, okay? Goes in soft like wax. Oh, it hurts. It hurts. Don't you worry about that none, okay? Just leave that right in there. Kind of an hors d'oeuvre. Any of you here worked in uh, Nam or Korea, I'm sure you came across this baby once or twice. Just leave that cigarette right in there in the navel, just like a little human ashtray, all right? Just leave that in there. Now you're ready to get back to work. What do we want to do? How do we want to begin with the actual interrogation? Well, some people like to work with rubber truncheons, telephone books, knitting needles, plastic bag over the head, breaking fingers, breaking arms. Hey, we're not living in the dark ages. We have electricity. Electricity, when properly applied, will achieve whatever ends you desire. Simply take your two electrodes, nothing more than a couple of bare wires hooked up to a generator, all right? Just take those two electrodes, push them firmly up against the soles of the feet, the palms of the hands, around the ears, around the eyelids, the nostrils, the gums, the teeth, any cavities you might find are <laughs> very effective. The armpits, the nipples, the genitalia, all very effective. Now, I know a lot of you here have worked with electricity before, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about that right now. One point I always make when discussing electricity with training groups such as this is that you make sure you have on hand a licensed physician for two reasons. First of all, a physician will let you know exactly how much electricity is needed to get the job done. That's what the doctor's there for. That's what his job is. Ask him questions. Use him, all right? No reason to waste electricity. We're all on a budget around here. Secondly, you have a lot of people working around the area, a lot of personnel working around the interrogation. You don't want anybody to get hurt. Okay, now, if you have any more questions, please talk to your commanding officers. Otherwise, tomorrow night we'll finish up on this seminar in public relations in Central America. <laughs> Let me welcome you to the broadcast. My name is Sister Alice Tully Hall. And I'm here to carry on the good work of my late great husband, the Right Reverend Avery Fisher Hall. Joining us in the studio today is the entire Hall family. We've got Carnegie Hall, Daryl Hall, Kingdom Hall, and Annie Hall, Robert Hall. Jerry Hall, and of course the twins, Albert and Monica Hall. Oh yes, and we got our newest addition to the family here. This here is little Tajma. She's our youngest. Now, now, there, there, honey. Now, settle down. Shh, be quiet, honey. Little Tajma. Super hot lubrication, tried in cherry. She'll love you for it. Hi, you're listening to the Tiffany LaFox Show, and I'm Tiffany LaFox. And in case you've been on Mars, this just happens to be the very first X-rated public talk radio show. And we've been having a super great time here talking to all sorts of perverts in the tri-state area. <laughs> yeah. And if you have a question or you just want to talk, give us a call, okay? We're going to have some more hot music and some more hot guests. So stay tuned because it's going to be really hot. Let's take this next call. Hi. 
This is Tiffany LaFox, and you're on the air. As a matter of fact, I've just completed work on a new film called Shaved Clams Part 2. And that's going to be available next month on the home video cassette market. So check it out because it's going to be really hot. Oh, wow. And uh, what's your name? Uh, my name uh, Vinny. Oh, Vinny, huh? Yeah. And you must be of uh, Italian descent. You're a big guy, aren't you? Huh? 250, 257 pounds, maybe? Yeah, uh huh. And I, I bet you're really hairy, aren't you? And alright? Yeah? You got lots of hair? Yeah? Say we're 90% of your body? Yeah? Yeah, like uh, all over your back and on your shoulders and on uh, your knuckles and uh, all over your feet. Oh, yeah, just like an animal, huh? Oh, that is so hot. Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it really turns me on. Yeah, oh, God, I love it. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, my bitch had a really big, thick line. Shut up. Now, while he's doing that, I'd like to take the time out to thank our sponsor, Dog Days Mongol Mix. Down, Tucky. Get down. Down, boy. Down. He just loves this stuff. Down, Tucky. Down. And if you have a dog or a cat or a weasel or whatever, I tell you, your livestock will really appreciate these Dog Days products. We got your horse child, your sheep child, come out, your unicorn child. No, I had some of this this morning. I swear to you all, it's just the same as that goat child. You know, everyone is always asking me, is Philopia your real name? And I say yes. I was born Philopia Dolores Jean Hunchnuberger in Duluth in 1964. I moved to Minneapolis when I was 17 to study at Rosemary School of Baton and Tap. I had a part-time job working at St. Paul 7-Eleven, and that's where I met Prince. He used to come in and play Pac-Man and Slitterpeed, and I used to fix some slurpees. Naturally, he wanted me to start singing, but <laughs> I knew I didn't have any talent. But Prince was smart. He knew what kind of money could be made in the music industry. Tripping, tripping, sipping, oozing, itching. 
special night in store for you. Tonight we're going to be watching George Wessel and Marjorie Farley make out for the first time. Now these two young people have never once explored the possibility of each other's bodies, so tonight's going to be real special for them. To do this, we're going to have to form a little circle around them. Circle, everybody, circle. Now Marjorie's husband has never seen her with another man, so tonight's going to be real special for him also. Are we nervous? No, we're not nervous. Are we having a good time? Hell, we're having a great time. And who made all that great time possible? South Bay Shore Society Love Club, that's who. And who's president of that great organization? Me. What is the code of our club? We are liberated, we are free, our bodies belong to each other, we deny no man or woman entrance to our inner core. Now touch the genitalia of the person next to you. Go ahead, touch the genitalia. And repeat after me, there's no such thing as love. It's just a question of need. There's no such thing as love. It's just a question of need. The first time I met you, I thought you were somebody else. The first time I talked to you, it seemed like we'd known each other a long time. The first time I came up to your apartment, I could tell you made an effort to look good. The first time we kissed, our teeth crashed. The first time I saw you with no clothes on, I couldn't believe my eyes. The first time we made love, the old lady from upstairs banged on the door and said, Are you all right? On the way home after the first time, I found myself thinking, This is how it should be. No demands, just pleasurable sensations. I won't raise expectations. I won't raise expectations. I'm in a dancing mood. It's probably on account of you. I'm not going to think about it. It was in Odessa. That's when I felt it begin to happen. The unraveling. The past, the present, what I wanted all laid out for you to decide. For you to pass judgment on. For you to decide if I was what it was. Whatever that was you were looking for for you was in a dark room when you said it. When you said it, there were no lights on. I don't know why I was missing you. You're obviously a good thing for me. I just can't give in. 
I just can't relax with a good friend. I've gotten used to unrequited love. I'm comfortable with it. Whenever there's a chance that love may be given back, I back away. I get nasty. I tease and torment. You want to know what's happening? It's just intimacy scares the hell out of me. Don't take it personally. But isn't it lovely when everything's right? When the kisses connect and our legs are entwined? Isn't it fine when we open up, put our defenses down? Isn't it lovely just watching TV? Eating Hagen does ice cream, just you and me? Isn't it lovely? Or sometimes I wake myself up in the middle of the night just to watch you sleep. And I press my chest against your back and breathe and sink with you. The way you curl up like your back in the womb just endears me closer. One time I woke up and you had your mouth against my ear. You were breathing into my ear. And for a minute, I thought it was the sea. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely just to go for a walk in the neighborhood? Who guessed the simple pleasures could feel this good? Isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? And you said, where did you steal that from, a Hallmark card? Oh, to be in love with someone who's in love with me. Not one of those one-sided affairs that ends up messy. Where's the real McCoy? Just when you think you've hit rock bottom, L'amour! L'amour! He met her on a Sunday by the South Street Pier in a cafe no one goes to because no one knows it's there. It had copies of Architectural Digest magazine on the back of every chair. It was very chic. The waiter was nervous. He had no eggs. So they reread the menu and went for the Greek salad instead. When it arrived, it was very small, and they both thought, is that all you get for $11? She said, I've got some pretty good coffee and some above-average apple pie. You're welcome to try it if you want to stop by. When they got to her apartment, he went straight for her record collection, because he always believed you could tell a lot about a person by what they listened to. Well, she had lots of jazz and stuff with soul, so he figured she was cool. She showed him her poetry and her punky clothes. She said she went to school in Jersey with Phoebe Snow. He felt curiously close to her. He felt curiously close. The next day he got a call. She was down the street. And had he eaten dinner yet? And did he want to meet? Well, he had. But he said he hadn't. So they grabbed some... Sejuan. There was a lot of strange people in the restaurant. And he forgot that he was nervous, and he forgot that he was shy, and he leaned across the table and he said, Do you want to spend the night? When they got to his apartment, he ran to the bathroom and brushed his teeth. Then she ran to the bathroom and brushed her teeth. They both had this phobia about bad breath. The first kiss tasted like crest with fluoristat. Then he slipped some speech music under the stereo. She slipped off some of her clothes, and he slipped off some of his clothes. And they got into bed with half their clothes still on. And they kissed some more and threw some more clothes on the floor, and neither one remembered falling asleep. But she woke up early, like you do when you're sleeping in a strange place. Plus, the garbage trucks outside made the windows shake. And she waited for him to wake up to see how he'd react to seeing her next to him. And when he opened his eyes, he was grinning. And that was just the beginning. That was just the beginning. I hear music, but there's no one there.
while you are asleep, and the leaves in the shining breeze. It made me smile at your soul. While you are asleep, I once stole your clothes. I stole your t-shirt, wore it to work. The people there were saying, where did you get that t-shirt? It really isn't you. And I said, yes, it is. But that wasn't true. It wasn't me. It was you. While you were asleep, I had breakfast with my friend. We got into an argument. He said, where did you get that attitude? I said it was new. If I had backup singers, they'd be going, Baby, it's you. Baby, it's you. But I don't. Baby, it's you. Here I go again. I hear those trumpets blow. a chance on love. Taking a chance on love. 